heavy fish. So what's your thoughts on Americans? I think you guys are a bit ditzy sometimes. What do you guys think about guns? Does America have a lot of guns? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I raise my American flag up, I want them to think I'm armed to the teeth and don't come to my boat. Yeah. You know? Let's go to Exmouth, get up there, spend some time up here on the Ningaloo Reef, and then we'll keep hopping up Australia up to uh, to Broome, and then at Broome we'll jump across to uh, Indo. So is Indonesia open right now? Uh, they're semi-opened and they're opening full up in July. July. According to my the agent down there. And are they required vaccines or quarantine? We don't know all those rules. Yeah, you do have to quarantine. But in July, when they open full up, they're probably going to have to change a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. Float away. Float away. Yeah, I'll let it float away. Making pretty good time to Kanawha. We got 22 knots of wind across here, 23 apparent. Got a 1.9 current on our nose. That's nice. That's why we're rolling. As winter slowly rears its head here in the Southern Hemisphere, although mild and nothing like a North American winter, we keep moving on northward, looking for a more balmy and temperate climate for snorkeling, kiting, and splashing about in the water. The last few weeks, we've spent unplugged and unhurried through countless sunsets, all sorts of wildlife, and easy sailing conditions, we've made our way up the Western Australian coast, which is similar in size to the west coast of the United States. Although we have filmed occasionally, we mostly just enjoyed the downtime from social media, email, and internet, stretching our legs on land, and peaceful days with the kids and with each other. So we just arrived here in Coral Bay. It is beautiful, the sun is shining. It's a little chilly, just the wind is a little chilly. Temperatures are average here for winter, 65 to 70 degrees, but it's a very nice day. Hey, Kate is awake. You wanna go? Okay, we're just gonna run to town, look around. I just woke up and I'm going, oh yes. You did up. just wake up. We'll do school when we get back. It'll be fun to launch up those hills with a kite. Don't want to skip school. Yeah, we do. 
What are y'all gonna do? Just roll down the dunes or something? Mm -hmm. Did anybody notice he got a new hoodie? Yeah, he got it a while back. It looks disgusting. It's dirty, but it's cleaner. It looks like really fine sand. It does. That's what I said to Jack. That's some fine sand. Unfortunately, yesterday, while Keith was helping friends scout out some underwater life to film, the drone had a sudden glitch and flew directly into the water right off the back of our boat. Luckily, we do have a backup drone so that the show can go on. And thankfully, Keith is a MacGyver of sorts and decided to dive in and retrieve the waterlogged drone. So I took this drone apart that fell in the water yesterday. It was only in the salt water for like 20 minutes. I went down and got it, pulled it back out, and I mean the corrosion and the just unfathomable about how the salt in here just kills it quickly mm. but I think I saved the motors and I say I think the gimbal's still good but there is a little corrosion around the edges of this gimbal thing so it may not be no good either but you don't know so what happened was it uh, I don't know what user error? I know it wasn't a user error I don't know what happened Yes. Luckily, Spend we have a backup. Luckily, we have a backup. I'm going to try to put it in the water today. And I've got spare parts. Surely, I can build something from something. Hmm. Oh, well, that's easy. And Finn and Kate are playing, uh, or, I mean, Jack. That's Jack. I get, yeah, I get my kids confused from time to time. Playing Minecraft. Okay. Yep. Plenty of pieces here to play with. Yeah, this is like an engineer's dream. Yeah. Mechanical Probably ought to keep all these little screws for something. Yeah. You put those in some sunglasses, something, yeah. somewhere, sometime. Yeah. Somebody might need them. You haven't thought about like, contacting DJI? It? Well, it'd be too, they wouldn't take anything back now. No, but that's the second one that's just zapped out for no good reason, flown right in the water. I don't know what. I think you if have it, a theory. Share it. I have, I, so I have a theory. When, when, the, when the drone... When the drone is sitting on the boat, and so there's sensors in here in the in the drone that, that tell it it's level and keep the drone level in flight. And when the boat is rocking, I think when you I think you need to hold the drone to let it take off instead of taking it off from a boat that's moving, even though it's a little rock. I think it messes up those sensors and, and it when it takes off it tries to adjust immediately and that's maybe why it caused it to crash. That's my that's my theory. Mm -hmm. If anybody can validate that, <laughs> I don't know. After a few days at Coral Bay, we moved on to Yardy Creek, a 50 nautical mile day sail away. That's a tuna for sure. Yeah. You bet a shark ate it? No, I bet a shark gets it though. Gets it before you get it up here? Heavy fish. There we go. We already caught a wahoo this morning. I like wahoo better than tuna, so I didn't want to have to mess with that cleaning up. Yeah. You caught it and cleaned it yourself this morning. Yeah. A wahoo. I woke up and he's cleaning yeah, fish. Laying a fish all by himself. They're on both sides. That one feels like a wahoo. Yeah, he's just jerking. Oh, 
all require me to oh, help? Yeah, that one got up. Yeah, it did. It was a nice one, but I let it go. Did you get a photo? Yeah, yeah, Renee filmed the whole thing. It was, uh, I bet it was bat. close to, close to, what do you think? Uh, it's bat. Yeah, it's big. It was a pretty good size one. Yeah, but, uh, anyway. It's still there for y'all. It's still there in the water for you when you want it. Hey, Peg. We are all done fishing today. Yeah, I don't know. It's been ridiculous. When you see this, TTD is time to destination. Uh, DTD is uh, distance to destination. So we got 11 miles, two hours at the pace we're going right now. Um, this is the wind speed, six knots, true wind, 6.7 apparent. Our waypoint bearing, course over ground and speed over ground, we're going 6.3 knots. Celebrity crush. Brad Pitt. Oh, <laughs> there you go. And yours? Don't say Brad Pitt. Ah. Uh, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. I don't know. I'll have to say Matthew McConaughey. Hey, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Probably a footy player. Really? Yeah. Really? What about you? Who's your celebrity crush? Um, probably go Ariana Grande. <laughs> Ariana Grande. <laughs> Oh, I'll be Brad probably Pitt. Brad. <laughs> My celebrity crush is probably about 60 now, probably Michelle Pfeiffer or something oh, yeah, like that. Oh yeah, she's pretty hot. I'm yeah. telling you, she's pretty hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think about guns? Guns? Oh, no, anti-gun. Anti anti-guns. 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 Why are you anti-guns? Well, it's worked over here. We don't have many shootings yeah. and things like that. Well, we we don't that. have the gun <laughs> problems here that you do over there. What do you think about guns? No, I don't like, disagree. So I don't agree with it. Back home. We, uh, we, no one uses it. No, no, you should. No one had it. No one was. Right. No. So, what's your thoughts on Americans? Oh, I think I think you guys are a bit ditzy sometimes. Ditzy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. I, I don't know. I, I don't really like the idea of America. My uncle lives there, and the guns and stuff. I'm a bit uncomfortable with. You are. Yeah. I, I like where I am in Australia. You do. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm the same. I don't really. I'm not too fond of them and I'm not against them but yeah. I like where I am too. Do. Australia is good. What do you guys think about guns here in Australia? Um, I think it's good that we have a law about it. You yeah. think it's good that you have a law about no, no guns? Mm -hmm. Does America have a lot of guns? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you think America has lots of guns? Because we're bad people. <laughs> we, um, we're farmers so we come from a farm we have things that need shooting. If it's for an, you know, a, an agricultural purpose, yes. I mean, you can have guns, they've just got to be kept in a gun safe and have a license and... Yep. My belief is if, if you've got access to guns so readily, there will be a lot more, because um, there's some crazy people around and, and the drugs 
you know, they're, yeah. they're on drugs and all that sort of stuff, and then they get hold of a gun, and it's just, once, it's, once you shoot that gun at someone, it's all over. Right. We've addressed the topic of guns a couple of times before, but in case you haven't heard Keith's thoughts on carrying a gun on a boat, he discusses it in depth here at our Just Catamarans panel at the Florida Boat Show back in February of 2020. All right, good question. So this the guns question. Do we carry armaments? Do we carry weapons of mass destruction? Uh, so I'm a gun guy. Grew up ranching, grew up in that world, hunting, fishing. I'm a gun guy. To carry a gun and you go to a country and they make you check that weapon at the port and then you're cruising around the island, what good does that weapon do you? You're not going to get robbed or, or boarded on the high seas a thousand miles from land. It's going to be around those islands. I've never, we've never been in a place, I mean there's been some times where we thought, are those pirates or is it a fishing boat? And nine times out of ten it's probably a fishing boat. You know, and, but you get scared out of your mind, You're like, oh, is that, they, yeah, what do they want? The rule for me came down to this. If I get in a gunfight with somebody out there on the water, which if it was just me and my wife, I probably wouldn't have a problem, and I'm bravado in saying this, but I probably wouldn't have a problem with that. But if they shoot back at me, and chances are they're not going to be very good shots at night, and my kids are down in the hull, that fiberglass is not going to stop an AK-47 bullet. And it's going to go through that hole, and if it hits one of my kids, that's an outcome I can't live with. So it doesn't matter how brave I am or how tough I think I am, if they spray my boat with bullets and it hits one of my kids that are down hiding, I can't live with that outcome. So most of the time, and it's kind of rumored, I don't know if it's a fact, but most of the time when you fly an American flag, most people think you're armed because you're red, you know, they think you're red, but they'll attack the Frenchies, they'll attack the other guys, but, but they won't attack us. When I raise my American flag up, I want them to think I'm armed to the teeth and don't come to my boat, you know? Don't come to my boat. In, in all seriousness, we've never felt unsafe out there. I've never, especially after the first run. I've, and of course, we're going to the Philippines and Indonesia in the next couple of seasons. So that's going to test our mettle there to see what we're doing. And then we've got to choose whether we want to go around through the Suez Canal, depending on, or go down around South Africa. Sorry, but again, buddy boats is, is a very, um, especially when you're around islands and ports, don't anchor by yourself, anchor with other boats, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to say. A great question. Tune in next week as we slowly and carefully make our way to the next anchorage. Uh, it's just bombies all across here. Just... Yeah, that's a pretty shallow bombie. Oh, you're going right over one. You're going right over one.